Yeah. So, um, for reasons that have not been properly revealed, the talk would be in English. Not my fault. Um, the pronunciation is, of course, my fault. Um, hackers don't matter. How many hackers do we have here? How many of you identify as hackers? None. What on earth are you doing at the Italian Hackers Camp, anyway? Oh, okay. Get it. <laughs> You're anonymous. Okay. So, you are hackers, but you don't tell. Good. So, good. Uh, what's a hacker, anyway? I, I tried to find some sort of definition. Uh, various dictionaries here, and uh, I don't know about you, uh, almost anybody on earth can fit in these categories. And it's difficult to pick somebody out of a person who's skilled in the use of computer systems. All right, that leaves out a few people, but we all go around with you know, four cores, six cores in our pockets. I have. So it's difficult today not to be able to work with a computer in you know, some facility. So are we all hackers? Um, I don't know, it's a rather you know, vague, fuzzy definition. And uh, so let's skip the definition. What should a hacker be doing anyway? Um, this is the jargon file. Some of you may still remember it. Uh, hackers are, have, are supposed to have a, an ethic. Well, yeah. <coughs> um, if this is an ethic, then I am probably, I don't know, the president of the United States or something. I mean, anything can fit in, which is both good things and bad things. Because You can be a hacker no matter what. It means you have no constraints. It means you're ripe for plucking. So, uh, to sum it up, uh, I have a few years on my shoulders. I think I've met my fair share of hackers. I've never called myself one. Wait. Um, so this is a sort of personal list of things I have personally found in people who called themselves hackers. Uh, they're, they're definitely passion driven, aren't we all? I mean, given the level of salary you get in this country, you must be passion driven. Um, <coughs> they definitely tend to see the world through tech, meaning that if there's a problem, tech is the way to go to find a solution. I have recently seen a startup being funded for matching stocks in washing machines. It is a problem. Um, it has a sort of just do it attitude since before Nike was invented and uh, tends to be an, an info libertarian with other people's information actually and is very status conscious. Um, meaning that if you are an experienced hacker, you tend to sneer at younger hackers. You may be helpful, but you tend to, you know. Um, socially speaking, hackers are challenged. First version of this slide said inept, which is maybe a bit strong. Anyway, we in the IT field are definitely socially challenged in one way or another. Um, we tend to have some for, sort of disrespect of norms, again, especially other people's. Um, we are, of course, individualists. We are self-centered. Uh, and, and we have this, we have collective attention. Anyone who's trying, tried compiling into a very noisy room means this. You know what it means to work among other people who don't like other people, basically. And uh, we 
to screen them out. So what kind of person comes out of this? I think we can, do you agree on this? Not very limiting. Uh, maybe it's not too pleasant, okay, but this is not Miss America. Uh, hackers. hackers are supposed to be... What's the point in being a hacker anyway? It's this, the thrill of being, you know, a bad guy. Have balls. That's the point. The hacker, basically, is a gifted male teenager. You pick, you know, random thoughts about what being a hacker is. It all revolves around being an alpha male, which explains why 52, 53 percent of the population is here represented by exactly three people. Hmm? Okay. Um, any problem with this? No, basically not. But as I said before. Somebody who buys into this kind of mindset is ripe for plucking. Let's see how. Uh, here's a myth. I grew up with this. Hackers are the heroes of the information revolution. It was the title of a very old book by Stephen Levi. Um, it's a myth. But anyway, this is basically how it works. We're only here for the code. These days of Cambridge Analytica, of Facebook scandals and things, you hear people say, no, I'm only an engineer, I don't mess with you know, politics, those fuzzy things. We do not like fuzzy things. We, don't li we do not like the world as it is. It's too messy. Hmm? We like clean, neat solutions. And we do know that any problem as a clean, neat solution that's also wrong. But we tend to forget it. This is my best attempt at a pun at 4 a.m. So, excuse me. <coughs> uh, there's not always been so much attention to hackers. In the beginning, I was there uh, a couple of years. In the beginning, hackers were not cool. Uh, if you go back or typical Hollywood movies. <laughs> this is what careers were like before the 10s, okay, in the old, in the 90s and 80s. Uh, you started in sales, junior account, area manager, marketing director, CEO. In finance, admin assistant, internal auditor, admin director, CEO. Then you started in IT. Junior programmer, senior programmer, also senior programmer, external contractor. Because you're too, you know, expensive <laughs> to be internal. So you're helpful. Something changed. Well, something changed. This was the, you know, standard image of doctors, the telly, mm, lawyers, investigators. Even even the black guy is, you know, cool. Black guy has no tie. Still Hollywood. Um average clerks. More lawyers. IT. Okay. This was the standard until just a while ago. Then capitalism happened. Gentrification ensued. And this happened. Big Bang Theory. Who loves Big Bang Theory? I do. And this. Okay. I have really loved I think it's spoken a lot to many of us. A uh, few inconvenient truths. Cowboys, you know, keyboard cowboys, using the, the old Gibsonian trope, are a libertarian trope. Cowboy is not a loner. He may be acting for good, 
but it's his personal vision of good. Society is kept out. So are hackers, a libertarian trope. Okay. Well, surveillance capitalism, when we lament the sad state of Facebook, when we reek at the doings of Cambridge Analytica and things, those hackers, that not some mysterious bad guy from some maybe <coughs> Why did they do that? Because it was cool. It was cool. I've read a couple books on the history of Facebook the first year, in the, in the very beginning. And uh, they were there because it was cool to do things. Nobody there thought what would happen. Because hackers are impervious to consequences. They do things first and think later. And, and also fuck losers. Always. There's that immortal Mark Zuckerberg quote. Sad fuckers, I think. He was referring to users. Um, light cartoon. I've actually experienced this in a colleague. I actually asked him, what are you listening to all day? What kind of music could you concentrate on? Nothing. Just don't want people talking to you. <clears throat> Another inconvenient truth. Tech is now officially a religion. You Read between the lines. Every time they speak of uh, AI, machine learning, algorithms everywhere, we are supposed to believe that the algorithm is right, even if the coder himself always does not know why or can explain why. Do not know why machine learning algorithms work. So we are supposed to, you know, have faith. I have issues <laughs> with religion. I don't know about you. I did not get into IT. I did not get into computers to be a sect, into a cult. Both. Thirty-five years down the line, I find myself a cult. Not good. Hmm. I'm high priest. I guess you can recognize. All of them. Really bad guy, Peter, founder of PayPal, and uh, and the only non-white male greatest speaker in the history of Elizabeth Holmes. He was worth something like nine billion dollars, and two weeks later, she was worth exactly. What do I mean when I say that tech is oh. well that two points are some old guys not many uh, any of you changed job any of the old guys have job was it easy I tried. It was not easy. But I wasn't able to change. I had to build a new. Because apparently, I don't know, there's something that kicks in when you're 35 that automatically outside of a month. So if you're inside the market, you stay not make waves, not be noticed. You tend to be on the outside, not allowed in anymore. Because, uh, I don't know, one of my best friends days ago, the early 40s, be the best sysadmin I've ever met. 
I call him the server with he just him He was uh, interviewed for this post as the such engineer, large and they dumped him because he was not proficient enough. Python is the language I chose when I was assigned a course in high school. We are here today. We have a few problems. Quite. All of them are nasty problems. Solutionism, transhumanism. There's people around saying, give the fuck about thrashing the planet. We will live inside machines. Show me a guy on a beat. Uh, financial speculation, also known as the blockchain. Some of you may be fans, not. Uh, which is thanks, but it's not the point. And anyway, these are very capitalist, very right wing. All of these have been built by, by well meaning hackers. I call because that's their role. Most of them have been unaware. Most of them are still are unaware. This is the image I use to amplify the idea of tech vision. For those who don't know what this is, it's an aluminum tube recycled from Elon Musk missile, Falcon X. They used a uh, fuel tube, repurposed as a sort of mini submarine, save the kids in that high cave, submarine cave, you know, trapped in 12 days. Uh, to go to the cave and come back took four hours divers. One of them, a former native island, died. Then came up and said, hey, you could take this two meter tube of aluminum and, you know, because of course, each cave does not have six lanes. I am deeply convinced that the guy Still does not understand why he's been did. Why he's been? I think he's in earnest. I think he believes that you know. Why shouldn't this get into an underground cave? Anybody who's in a cave knows why. And snake felt me. The thing attached as an empire. I've been working on this for a while, and unfortunately, while I was working on this book, the topic also became sort of fancy. So there are today a few very well written articles. One is from a guy the Pante, German guy, for artificial behavior. <coughs> and the other one is from Gilead. Dorian. They both with the incredibly religious slant it has been gaining a few they are better than so read and um, I went to ACD duration the idea here is that we are starting to see many problems caused by tech point is the 
solution will not come from here. Because these problems are not technical. No social problem has ever by tech. Maybe technical implements that aid solving a problem. Problem requires. If uh, highway maintenance is failing, we have potholes in the road. The solution is not to build larger cars, bigger tires, and you know, glide over the hole. The solution is to the road. But unfortunately, for the past 30 years, we've been thinking in basically American terms. You'll remember when the internet was called the information highway. Needed a metaphor to visualize back then. And the metaphor was the information superhighway. The problem is information superhighway relies on an American myth. Great roads, the coast to coast. Take your car and just go. Maybe a Corvette. Who does that? Girl, maybe it was a boy. Two girls. Why not? Point is, nobody ever thought of the problem having a road. The road was taken as granted. That has never been. It's always been like light, electricity, coming to your house. Somebody has to bring darn cable. Just slide along. Build the. Now we forgot five minutes. So, that's my. We will not get out of it. And surely not. Tech. Won't save us from this. There will be no mass Not for us, surely. And quite likely not for it. But you will not. Odds are against it. There will be no transcendence. None of us, we've all read Gibson. None of us will ever live. My money on that. And what's more important? There's no hack out of this. Solution would be costly, time consuming, and hard to implement. No quick. No amount of technical savvy save us. And possibly no way out. Just possible. Final word from the olden times. If all you have is a hammer, everything was taught to me like some sort of you know, condensed wisdom from the trade, back when being an IT was still a trade. I don't know, a passion. Problem is, technology is a hammer. Go around banging things on the head, hoping that they fell. So, that's why the title of the book, Hackers Don't Matter, maybe have mattered. After today, citizens need cited. will not be done an overnight. One question. One question only. Okay. I'll be around most of the day anyway. So. What a responsibility. <laughs> um, I partially agree with your point of view, but uh, what do you think of uh, um, as a more of a metaphor of uh, social responsibility as a bathroom in a shared house? 
if you have one bathroom, no, two bathroom for two people, it's okay. But if you have two bathroom for 20 people, okay. even if you want to have the right for bathroom, you can't. True, but I, I don't get the question. Uh, the question is, what do you think about the fact that technology mm -hmm. is useful in providing the resources to access basic freedom for some point of view, even if you value that kind of freedom, if you don't have the material access to it, it doesn't work. And technology can help in providing this uh, material access. Mm. Yes, I think I can see your point. Um, technology per se does not give you freedom you do not have already. It gives you the means to access those freedoms. Um, let me make an example. Uh, if you live in, uh, I don't know, China, in Russia, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, where you're not really supposed to speak out your mind all the time, uh, using technology does not give you that much. Feel very careful about what you say. Uh, of course, if you live in Europe or the United States, where you already are granted, Great. Then, of course, with technology, you can amplify that. But freedom was there to begin with. Thanks to you. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I think we close here. We're done. And uh, you I can reach him uh, outside later.